two points. What I want you to do is, now I'm asking you to determine the midpoint. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you get stuck with the midpoint, you can always just go ahead and plot. If you're given provided two points and you get stuck, you're like, ah, I can't really remember as far as on the midpoint. Remember, a lot of times we can just go ahead and plot these and see what it's going to take a look at. So right now I have j is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, negative 3. And k is at 1, 2, 3, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Yes? That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm just going to visually, what I want to do right now is I just want to visually look at the problem. Because I think a lot of times when you guys do the formula, if you don't have anything contexted really to relate it to, it doesn't really make sense. But yeah, what we're trying to do exactly, Dan, we're trying to determine where this point is, right? And we're, I'm going to show you guys algebraically, but the one important thing I want you guys to understand is this point, let's call it m, is m going to have an x value that's going to be positive or negative? Is the x going to be positive or negative? Positive. positive. And the y coordinate should be? Negative. And you obviously know it should be between the points 3 and 5, right? And the x should be between negative 3 and negative 8. So again, exactly what Damon said, when you're looking at applying the midpoint, we need to know the midpoint formula. And the midpoint formula is exactly as Damon mentioned. It's going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now remember, when determining the midpoint, you're finding a point. So you should have one x coordinate and one y coordinate. And that's it. So if we have x1, x2, y1, y2, we need to remember where exactly did all of those numbers come from. And remember, what they did is we just took our two points and we say, all right, that's xy and that's xy. right? But I can label these however I want to. I could say this is x1, y1. So then therefore, this would be x2, y2. But guys, it doesn't matter which one you want to label x1 and y1, x2 and y2. So now, I just go ahead and plug them in. So it would be 5 plus 3 divided by 2, comma, negative 3 plus negative 8 divided by 2. Well, 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And negative 3 plus negative 8 is negative 11. Divided by 2, I'm just going to leave it as a negative 11 over 2, which, if you want to convert to your decimal, would be negative 5.5. Right? And let's just go and double check. Let's see if that makes sense. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, And then down 5 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and a half. So yeah, that works. It makes sense. Right? And you guys can do that because what if your answer was wrong? What if you had negative 4 and positive 11 halves? Well, then you'd know you did something wrong because you'd go in over negative 4 and then up 5 halves. You'd be like, oh crap, I made something wrong because I know my midpoint's supposed to be down here. OK? So that's why I did the graphing, David, so you guys can kind of visualize and make sure that you're doing your answer correct. All right? OK. So 